Hey guys, today we're going to be reviewing a video submission in the TFT clinic. Uh, it was from a submission I had on Twitter called Charlie. Uh, thanks to G2A for sponsoring the channel. There's a reference link in the description below. This is a game about deep Diamond 1, Diamond 2 level. I thought it'd be interesting to analyze. Uh, obviously the patch has come out today, so it's, it's from last patch, but we're going to focus on fundamentals that I don't think have changed a huge amount from uh, this patch to the last th this next patch um also i have had a lot of submissions uh a lot of people have reached out to me with videos if i don't get round to covering your video in a timely manner because i will still cover videos from last patch but looking mostly at fundamentals but if i don't get around to covering your video in a timely manner if you would like me to analyze one of your games and provide you with notes i will do so um just just let me know um uh, I, I would like to start coaching in the future for a, or on a paid basis, but everyone that has reached out to me so far, uh, up until this point, um, if you would like me to analyze your video and give you some quick notes, I'm happy to do so if I don't get around to doing your video for the channel. Cool, let's dive into this video. Hey guys, today I'm uh, reviewing a VOD in the TFT clinic. Uh, this one's from Charlie, and I chose it because it was a uh, Diamond 1, Diamond 2 ELO game, and I thought it'd be quite interesting to look at someone in the higher ELO spectrum and, and sort of talk about some of their decisions. Um, so thank you, Charlie, for submitting this. This is a really nice uh, of you to do that. So having a look at what we've started off with here, we've got a Poppy with a Chain Vest. Um, I like that he is going towards a potential cybernetic start. Now, I always, always, no matter what, uh, like to keep a bard. So I would be hoping uh, in this particular circumstance that uh, Charlie would be looking to keep bard in this particular instance because he's just a really, really good unit to have in the early game. However, he's also now picked up a Vi, which is incredible because that's going to allow him to have uh, a potential uh, cybernetic start. And I think this was the correct decision. So he's, he sold and leveled up. Um, and I think this is the correct decision. I also think this is the correct type of uh, items applied to cybernetics the reason being is that the chain vest is going to allow him to go for a red buff on the lucian he uh is going to have a potential ionic spark so that could have been either um rod or uh in fact actually to be honest with you i might have made the uh, ionic spark rather than putting the item on the uh, leo on the fiora might have actually made the ionic spark in this particular circumstance however i think now that he's got the two star fiora that makes perfect sense in this circumstance, I would actually put Graves right at the back um, because there is a bl Blitzcrank. What I would say is that it's good to scout everybody, which he's doing right now. And if there isn't a Blitzcrank, you don't actually need to position like this at all. This is just a safe way of positioning. Um, it's good uh, at dealing with Zeds and it's good at dealing with Blitzcranks. Um, although I would say his Lucian was in the left-hand hex, which you'll see when this uh, round resets. And if there was a Blitzcrank on the right-hand side of the enemy board, it would actually pull the Lucian over the Vi. So where the Lucian's placed right now is not actually safe from a Blitzcrank. Um, so he's on round uh, two, three. Uh, he could sell, I think, and get to uh, 10 gold if he wanted to, but every unit that he's got is quite useful. So in this particular circumstance, I would actually invest the four gold and pre-level. If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna aim to hit um, 10 gold, I think the best thing that you can do in this particular scenario is actually just pre-level. And he actually does sell. Uh, I actually don't know if I like selling there. Um, I guess. It has its benefits and, and, and its drawbacks. Um, obviously, he now loses a bit of flexibility if he is to go for a Brawler um, build off the Vi into a Brawler Blaster build. Uh, but quite clearly, uh, he now has a bit more economy to work with. Now, I'd obviously be going for the Giant's Belt if I were um, Charlie in this instance because it would get him the red buff. That's perfect. Playing the game really well so far. So only some very minor mistakes in the early game right now. Um, I got it on two times speed though, by the way guys just so we can kind of work through the game together at a slightly quicker pace again The, the only mistake that he's got at this point in time is uh, The Lucian being where he is the other thing to mention is that if he still had the Blitzcrank So for instance if he sold the Leona and kept the Blitzcrank the Blitzcrank would be infinitely more useful in protecting a win streak uh, Compared to the units that he has right now like Malphite one is not particularly good um, But I would be looking to buy the Ziggs um, Obviously, I want to give myself as many options as possible so he buys the entire shop there. That's a really good move. Um, yeah, but I like to like to give myself as many as many options as possible when I'm playing, and, and obviously having rebels extra alongside cybernetics and also alongside um, blaster brawler is a perfectly good thing. One of the things that I think Charlie's going to face in this particular game is that he is obviously going to come to a point where he's going to have to decide 
which uh, build he wants to go for. I would say that he maybe isn't scouting as much as he should in the latter half of stage two, because what happens in the latter half of stage two is people start to combine items and they start to hoard units and you get an indication. So that guy right there that you just saw, he had a last whisper on a Zed. He also had two veins on his bench, quite clearly going for cybernetics and already has two, of, two out of three of one of the most important units in cybernetics. I don't blame him for not repositioning here, by the way. He doesn't really need to. He was so strong that he's going to beat this round anyway. Uh, but there is usually a way that you'd reposition to make this a bit easier on yourself. So he's... I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't have actually sold those units that he got there. Um, uh, the reason I wouldn't have sold those units in those particular that particular instance is because... Um, Ah, he, he accidentally sold the Jace. He did say in the description that he accidentally sold a Jace at 10.33. We've just passed the 10.33 mark, so I can see that that was an accidental sale of the Jace there. Because obviously Jace would have given him three vanguards, and he could have transitioned this into a good three vanguard mid-game, for instance. But like I said, I, I, I would have... Um, I wouldn't have sold those units that he picked up. If they weren't going to hit eco, you might as well keep them because they're always going to give you a, a potential direction to go in. But he's really healthy right now. Um, good thing he levels up. Um, I like the fact that he leveled up in this instance, and I love that he's now mixed his um, vanguards and his blast and his uh, uh, frontline. So he's going to have brawlers and vanguards and cybernetics. Well, not brawlers actually, just but just vanguard and cybernetic. Vanguard is infinitely better, in my opinion, than brawlers. Uh, pretty much in most circumstances, this is, might be one of the only matchups into sorcerers where uh, vanguards aren't as strong. But quite clearly, Charlie is super strong right now in the early game, and he's doing everything right to continue to. Um, He's doing everything right to continue to um, sort of maintain that advantage. Just taking a drink, sorry. So at this point, um, he's going to have to just start investing uh, experience into levels, which he's doing, which is just very clever. Obviously, just the, the standard way of dealing with it. Uh, again, one of the things that he, he isn't doing as, as much of that he could be is scouting. Um, if he noticed that a very strong Nocturne was on the left-hand side, he could have uh, potentially repositioned over to the right-hand side of the board, and that's actually lost his win streak. Um, I will reposition for some of the strongest people in the lobby when I'm on a win streak, and I would have repositioned my Lucian in that instance if I saw a Nocturne with those items on the left-hand side of the board. Also, if we haven't been scouting over the start of stage three, you might not have an idea about where people are committing to in terms of builds. Um, I think the best case scenario for him here, uh, yeah, Zephyr is a good item to, to go. I, I, you know, I might have gone for the Ionic Spark, but Zephyr is, is a perfectly strong item to uh, to make here. Um, even just giving the, the chain belt over to the, to the Leona in this instance is, is a good thing too. Uh, very quickly, just going to take a quick break and get a drink. Hey guys, sorry for the quick break. I needed to just collect my thoughts for a bit. Um, I won't go into too much detail on my YouTube video. I, you know, I don't want to um, bring a downer on the video, but there's been a, a lot of um, very, very awful stories coming out in the esports industry about um, men in positions of power. And one of the people that was recently implicated was a man that I worked with for a very long time. And uh, it made me sick to my core that, that this person, I, I had no idea. Um, I, I don't want to get too emotional about it because it's not about me, um, not about me at all. But uh, let's let's focus on the good things. Let's focus on this game. And uh, Charlie's playing this game very well so far. Um, I wouldn't even say that he particularly high rolled. I just think he made sensible decisions around the units that he was collecting and sensible decisions around um, the items that he wanted to prioritize. Um, quite clearly, the Lucian was a really really nice item to have. Uh, sorry, the red buff was a really nice item to have Lucian in this particular instance, and his mixed front line with blasters is very strong. Uh, he has generally got a very powerful um, board right now. I think one of the big things that he's going to have to deal with um, going through into this game is finding his direction, and a lot of that's going to be coming down to units that he finds. I think this right here, this right here, if I found this uh, and I was um, uh, Charlie. I would absolutely take the Jinx and probably commit to a Brawler Blaster direction uh, in this particular circumstance. Uh, I would definitely take the Infinity Edge uh, and I would then look to try and get a Last Whisper and go Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, Red Buff and play Jinx with the Blaster Brawler. Uh, if I find a Jinx in this scenario, 4-1 uh, naturally with the HP advantage that I had, I would definitely be looking to play Jinx. It looks like he's trying to commit to a Cybernetic build. Now, I don't necessarily think that's the wrong decision. Um, I just personally saw a few other people trying to go for cybernetics and I felt like uh, the Jinx being offered in that scenario would have given me the Jinx direction, especially given that he actually has um, units that can 
can build into Brawler Blaster very easily. Like, you can run a Vanguard frontline if you want to play Brawler Blaster. And you can see here, like, there's already quite a lot of people that are running Cybernetic. I've seen I've seen two people in this lobby that have already committed to a Cybernetic build path. And I think one of the biggest things here, uh, in my in my eyes, is that um, the Jinx would have been the play. And another Jinx offered to him right here, I, you know. This is obviously a difficult decision to make, and this is definitely one of the the hardest skills that you need to learn about when you're um, looking to transition and looking to commit to a build. Um, I feel like he maybe hasn't done enough scouting to see what's on the boards and see what else everybody else is going, but I've just had two natural jinx offered to me. Obviously, they could have been the same jinx, quite clearly, but I've had two natural jinxes offered to me, and I probably would have committed to the jinx at this point. Because you can see he's starting to fall off in the mid-game, mainly because, you know, he hasn't walked into the vein. The vein being one of the most important units that you can get from the mid-game. He also doesn't have the core items of Last Whisper. Last Whisper, to me, is such a core item for um, cybernetics right now, because Vayne or Irelia, they need to get through that armor. I personally would have just gone Blaster Brawler in this particular uh, circumstance. He had the, the Malphite. He had a good front line. He had the Vi. It, it was on the table for him. Um, but I do understand why he decided to sort of, sort of work towards Cybernetic. The problem that he's going to face in this particular game is that he does not have the items to uh, actually carry the late game. Um, the problem that he has right now is this is a Cybernetic comp that is purely based on uh, items like Red Buff. There is no Infinity Edge, there is no Last Whisper. And whilst the Red Buff is fine and a decent item, it falls off in Stage 4 compared to a lot of other items in the game. Uh, so that is one of the biggest issues that I'm seeing with the, the way that uh, Charlie has approached this game. It's just that he was, I don't think he was aware of how many people, or if he was aware of how many people were going cybernetics, he's maybe not playing to the right cybernetic win condition. And I think when you go red buff, um, I would always be having cybernetics as a secondary thought, and I would be thinking about Brawler Blaster as a primary. Now, obviously, Jinx is very popular. Um, there are a lot of people playing Jinx, as you can see right here. But um, quite clearly... Uh, he was offered a few jinxes in the in the shop, and you can't really easily transition into um, snipers uh, simply because I, I know that the teammate's probably there for the sniper the sniper thing, but uh, you can't easily transition into snipers because um, the items don't really suit. He's got some great units for cybernetics now, obviously, but the main thing is he just doesn't have the items for Vayne. Um, he would have to get very lucky on stage five to have the items for Vayne, or he would have to play for a secondary win condition, which is obviously the Ergot. He should have picked up the Ergot realistically in this scenario. Um, he needed to go Ergot here if he wanted to have that secondary win condition for Cybernetics, and um, Ergot would have been the play. Interesting that he decided to go into Jinx. I think that's an okay decision, but um, obviously he's offered, had been offered so many Jinxes this game. Um, I do think the better play would have overall been, yeah, okay, go for... Um, go for blaster brawler now he's he's strong don't get me wrong like when you've got a thresh at this stage in the game you've got um uh irelia with um thief's gloves like these these are not bad items in any way shape or form obviously you want to you want to save the two star thresh here um and i do appreciate him going super early nine because maybe that was looking to give him an out through uh legendary advantage so the out that obviously he's looking for is, is ergot's um, but yeah, just the problem is that he just doesn't have the items for cybernetics to really make them good uh, And that is going to punish him the further and further that we go through this game um, Just because Vayne really is your mid-game carry now He's obviously doing fine right now because of that uh, that advantage But he should be picking up these ergots like the whole point of Thresh 2 is ergot now Obviously that has been nerfed on the recent patch. I've got to you know, obviously be clear at the start of the video This was, was a video from the last patch, but um the whole point of Thresh 2 is to pull in Ergots, and you pull them in with full mana, and they instantly instantly eat someone, which is the, the kind of thing that makes them good. Um, so I obviously would be picking up the Ergots at every given opportunity when I could. Now, Thresh 2 is a great unit, because obviously, as you can see here, he's buying a lot of time. But even then, you can see versus someone who's got the, the really good items for Cybernetics, which is Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, and Giant Slayer. Um, you know, he's in a good spot. Now, I, I, I personally would have gone for the Last Whisper. I personally would have taken that for Vayne, because Vayne right now is not really doing much damage. But he's gone for the Thief's Gloves, which he can apply to a lot of other units that we have on the board right now. Um, go Thresh, I think Thresh would be my target for Thief's Gloves in this particular instance. Um, definitely, uh, okay, yeah, okay, so he's gonna sell the Vayne. Give her the Thief's Gloves, which is perfectly fine, and he's going to give the last... I would give the... I personally would give the GA to Thresh. Personally, I would give the GA to Thresh, but okay. Uh, I think it's fine here. I, I, I genuinely don't think... Like, he had an excellent mid-game um, and a really good early game, but I just feel like 
he may be um even though he's still winning like he's, he's obviously beating some people i feel like he, this could have been a very easy first place game uh had he maybe committed to, to brawl, brawl of bosses with the items that he had uh or maybe look to play for last whisper infinity edge on the vein for instance but right now i think what he's riding off is his huge hp advantage and, and win streak through the mid game um and again, he's missed those Urgots for the Thresh, which is one of the most important units that you can have for them. Uh, one of the other things that he could obviously win off is, a, is potentially an, an Echo 2, but he has just he's just got a very strong six Cybers at this point in time. So I don't necessarily think what he's done is wrong. He's still top three here. I'm just, this is just offering criticism for what I would have done in its place. Um, but you know, I don't necessarily think what he's done is, is super wrong, but I just think it's a suboptimal way to have played Cybernetics um, as well as given how many other people were playing cybernetics in this game now obviously we can see he's he's gone into a situation where um he's pretty strong right now um lulu for sure okay uh, the only the, one of the yeah the, the, uh, got the, the only major thing that i'm seeing in the late game right now is that he's he's not actually putting any good units for ergot uh, for thresh to bring in um positioning wise it's fine like he's uh He's kind of just uh, trying to lock, uh, lock up people with the Zephyr. Um, his Aurelia is on the second row. His Illusion, which is kind of his main damage dealer, is being protected. So I actually, you know, positionally, I think he's doing perfectly fine. Um, but again, like that Ergot, these Ergots, like we passed like five or six now. It feels like, and these could have this could have been a bench full of Ergots that would just have instantly won him the game. No matter how he itemized his Cybernetics here, the Ergots would just win him the game by having a Thresh two that early on. Like he could have just done. He's been winning pretty well over the last three rounds, obviously. But honestly, I don't like a lot of the people in this lobby are not particularly strong. Um, I think if if you itemize like this, um, the further down the line, you, you, you probably you probably wouldn't get as much. Uh, success. Um, again, I think that keeping the Sorakas on the bench is good. Uh, there's the Echo. I would not sell. I, uh, well, yeah, I personally would ke would have kept the Lucian at this point. Um, but the but the Echo one is is also good. Uh, also, I think gives you a good matchup versus another cybernetic player. But yeah, I think I probably would have kept the Lucian. Uh, but the Echo is also pretty solid. He applies red buff to everybody in this particular instance, and that's obviously good. Uh, with the enemy Lucian going down, that being the most important thing. Um, Honestly, he's he's looking like he's going to get first. Obviously, you can get first without playing perfectly. Um, uh, in this scenario, he he seems to have had a pretty a pretty solid game. That's a uh, and, you know I don't know if I would double up. I don't think Red Buff and Morello stack. I, I'd have to be I'd, I'd need to get um, clarification on that. But I don't think Red Buff and Morello stack the burns anyway. So I would need to get clarification. I think with the items that he's got on, I mean he's got an insane item for the Irelia on the Thief's gloves. Also, I love what he's doing in terms of positioning of the Vi. Just to make sure he knocks up the uh, the Lucian, that was a really nice play, really good. Um, and look, you know, he's ended up getting well, quite clearly, looking like he's going to get first here. I think it could have been a much easier win, but irrespective, it's still first. It does show you how flexible you can be with items and units. I just think it was maybe a little bit suboptimal um, compared to compared to maybe uh, the way I would have played it. But again, first is first. Uh, just wanted to give you a, a little bit of an overview of my thoughts.